Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. Let's pray and get started um, as we go deeper into knowing how the prophetic works. So let me just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, Lord, we have this opportunity to learn um, uh, about the gifts of the Spirit. And Lord, with a deep understanding, Lord, we believe that uh, we will be able to use these gifts, Lord, in our own lives and ministries. We pray that as we learn your word, that, uh, Lord, not only will we increase in our knowledge, but uh, help us, Lord, to flow and uh, manifest these gifts, Father. Stir it up, Lord. Stir it up among all of us. Help us to, uh, Lord, uh, practice these gifts, Lord, in, in a manner that brings honor to your name. We commit this class into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in the uh, last class, we started talking about songs, prophetic songs. And we have seen that music and song are quite connected to uh, the flow of the prophetic anointing. Then we saw how the scriptures, especially in the Psalms, there is this reference to new songs, something new that we can sing to the Lord. We saw there are categories of songs, songs which we sing to God, songs which we can sing over others, songs that God sings over us. And we also saw how there are times when we can lift up a song which will bring deliverance. It is like warfare, you know, a weapon which we use against demons, situations, uh, and also in our prayer for the nation. And we just started learning, uh, you know, with regard to the, like we touched upon the tabernacle of David. And we said that uh, for uh, about 33 years, there was continuous uh, prayer, praise, worship, which was very, very um, uh, like, you know, delightful to God that God said, I'm going to bring back the tabernacle of David. And uh, we saw how there were leaders who heard from the Lord. No wonder uh, they were able to manage with new songs for, you know, 33 long years. And we see that the people were very skilled. They worked along with teams and um, they, they were excellent in what they did. So uh, it is understood that at this time, Okay, at this time, there were several psalms also which were written. So in the book of Psalms, you may find uh, a few psalms which come from this time of the tabernacle when they were written. And uh, to when we look at the psalms, we would see that, you know, many of them, most of them are prophetic. People heard from God and then they, they uh, actually wrote down those psalms. So uh, there are psalms by David, there are psalms by uh, uh, Asaph, okay? And uh, who is this Asaph? He's one of those musicians in the tabernacle. So obviously, they were prophetic songs. And when we look at the psalms, there are some categories of psalms which we can look at and you know they would uh, they they would enable us to understand how to really uh, or or to understand where they came from what was the original intention of those psalms so when the psalms were written what are psalms psalms are nothing but some form of uh, you know poetic poetry or poetic language that was uh, put together uh, and once it was put together we are told that they were handed off to musicians. So the text was written the way today we understand songwriting. So you come up with the lyrics and then you give it to the uh, musicians and then they will put appropriate music into it and then it becomes a song. So same way, whatever they wrote, whether it is Asaf, David and the other leaders, it was given over to the musicians and they put the uh, appropriate music to it. So what are the categories of Psalms? That's what we will look at now. We are. I am on page 118 in our PDF version. So uh, a Psalm of David, when you consider that, that term Psalm, the Hebrew word is Mizmor. Mizmor. And uh, it means 
an instrumental music set to uh, a poem set to notes so basically a poem is written and then music is added to it so that's a mizmor so uh, the psalmist david wrote such psalms poetry which was then backed up by music and then there are other psalms which are called as meditation of david okay meditation from again if you go back to the hebrew word it's uh, shigam or however you pronounce that in hebrew uh, but what it means is wandering so we may look at some psalms and see how david is speaking from his heart like god where are you or why have you left me alone so it's just his wandering thoughts that's why we have to be so careful uh, when we are interpreting it and when we are uh, actually applying those psalms so they're just wandering thoughts uh, and it is also something that we call rambling someone is just uh, pouring out their hearts and just saying anything that that's coming to their minds so they're just wandering psalms or they are meditations of david it's not necessarily uh, you know something that david is saying yeah god is like this no he's just pouring out his heart okay but we uh, yeah we we may find some disjointed portions here and there so yes so uh, it can have a couple of themes running through it then there are also what are known as uh, mishtim or miktim and uh, they mean special uh, an engraving okay so that's the exact translation an engraving psalm or uh, uh, another term used is golden psalm so they are very precious psalms and they are very valued psalms when we read in english it will only be like psalm of david psalm of david psalm of david but when we actually look at it in the hebrew language there are different words that are used so that way we can understand which kind of a psalm that is okay so mishtim uh, are the ones that are very precious very very valuable psalms then there are prayer prayer psalms prayer psalms are again you know unto the lord there are more intercession lord when will you come and save me when will you come and help me and you know so supplication he earnestly seeking the lord in the form of a poem uh, or you know in the form of a um, uh, psalm then there is contemplation contemplation of uh, asaph uh, and the hebrew word is uh, mas maskil and it means instructive instructive means in that poem there will be um, some some words spoken that tell us what to do okay that uh, educate us or inform us like uh, oh exalt the lord you people so it's just telling us what to do it's different in that sense so there can be contemplations or uh, what you call it as maskil or mashil and um, these are instructive psalms then of course there is also a psalm which is which is in hebrew it is shir and uh, that simply means a song a song a musical song that you can sing so it's not necessarily like an instructive uh psalm of asaph so as you can see there are all kinds of categories even in the psalms if you were to study the psalms uh about what is being spoken in those psalms we'll understand some are prayers some are just songs some are instructions some are wanderings uh, you know some are uh, prophetic some some are uh, prophetic in the sense something as we said earlier a uh, mishtim very valuable ones that uh, that may even be like messianic prophecies okay so uh, we must look at it in its context and understand it interpret it and uh, you know sing it okay so it's a study in itself the psalms uh, the music i don't know if there's a course that any of us can take that's only about the the psalms and you know the details of the psalms so it's so very beautiful um 
so it falls in all kinds of categories now practical instructions as far as prophetic worship is concerned so we've understood now that even the psalms were written by uh, people of god strong men of god uh, and they uh, they were words which were inspired okay that's why the holy spirit has intended to put them in the bible okay uh, but how how is it that uh, they were able to practice the flow of the prophetic in sa in song uh, we can learn a little bit from them so what we understand is uh, preparation preparation is very helpful okay uh, this is practical aspects for us uh, in our worship when we lead and all that so preparation when we say preparation what kind of preparation are we looking at obviously skill is needed because if the lord is giving us some new note or you know some new tune uh, which we have not we, we've already not explored then suddenly to lead people into that becomes difficult so to improve our skill level uh, as far as music is concerned you know vocals is concerned is important so investing time in that is very very valuable now apart from that what is the next preparation spiritual preparation in spiritual preparation our knowledge of the word becomes very necessary uh, so if a music uh, let's say a worship leader is not spending time in god's word it will become difficult for that worship leader to identify whether something is from the lord or not okay Be why because there's no rich deposit of the word in the heart like at that point where will you go and look like is it from the bible you turn the bible but if there's a rich deposit of god's word in our hearts we can be very sure that hey this is flowing from god's heart i can actually sing it that confidence comes okay and the word of god becomes the boundary within which we can test uh the the song like i will pour out my spirit if, if you get words like that you know it's there in scripture god said that i will in the last days i will pour out my spirit right uh, uh ask for me for rain in in the latter day so these are all passages of scripture uh he who is thirsty i will i will pour out my spirit on him who is thirsty isaiah 44 so we can go back to the scripture immediately and then we know hey it is within the boundary of god's word like if you get a song like okay god is singing over his people i'm singing a new song over you now if we don't know zephaniah 317 we'll wonder what is this how can god sing you know so a rich deposit of god's word in the heart of a worship leader will help them and uh, uh, it will also act as a boundary so these are the preparations necessary skill wise and uh, spiritual preparation wise now coming to uh, expectation expectation means that we every time we lead we must we must expect the spirit of god to move and do the work that he wants to do now if we don't have any expectation then uh, the spirit of god we are making it difficult for the spirit of god to manifest okay so when we have zero expectation then we will only stick to what we have decided like that is our plan we we'll stick to that plan and nothing else but when there is an expectation we make place for the spirit of god maybe somewhere in between uh, you know we feel like okay here in these lines uh, something is happening you know god is god is causing uh, his spirit to move upon the people so maybe we may dwell longer on those lines or uh, dwell longer in in uh, some of the the music of that song so that is how you learn to to be sensitive to what the spirit is doing and give him place so every time uh, anyone is leading or a team is leading they must expect holy spirit to make himself manifest okay so see all this will come by practice the more we flow in the prophetic the better we get at all of this then sensitivity sensitivity um, can be to firstly recognize uh, the the instruction of the spirit of god the revelation that we are receiving or the directives that the holy spirit is giving us uh, 
and sensitivity also means for the whole team to be sensitive because sometimes god may give the worship leader one portion of the song some new song okay? he's singing one line but maybe the co-leader brings in the second line okay or uh, like that even music wise the musician also has to be sensitive so the whole band for that matter when everyone is sensitive and they are being sensitive to the fact that okay god is uh, speaking through or ministering through such and such a person you allow that person to lead actually you got it so then there is that unity and as a team you can flow imagine right like the the worship leaders now starting off with those lines that they are sensing from the spirit of god like if the if whoever is playing a lead instrument they get irritated they're like what is this what is he doing like quickly move on next you know so then there's no cooperation within the team then you can't really uh, do it you have to all of everyone has to desire the prophetic and expect the prophetic and be sensitive then it is awesome you can all flow together and you know, those new songs can actually manifest so sensitivity is also very very important and in this manner uh, maybe a new song can be developed and a new song can be um, you know finalized uh, i was just listening to this person you know matt redman he wrote that song uh, uh, coming back to the heart of worship it's all about you so apparently he just sang it in one of the they have a you they uh, he was part of a youth um, worship setting and over there just like that in one of those ordinary sessions the song came and he sang it that's all and from that point he was only shocked it went that song went from here to there and all over the place so i mean it's like that because it's from the heart of god and uh, it it resonates with with others it got formed crystallized and it went on everywhere so you never know it's it's not like god is looking for some huge setting for uh, um a now song a new song to come it can just be born in a very humble simple setting uh, and i remember once in the um, uh, daily devotionals that we do right the daily devotionals pastor jay kumar had done one week of daily devotionals in that he had um, uh, only spoken about the history of hymns some hymns very special hymns uh, and uh, it's so nice to just go back to how that song came who wrote the song in what circumstances they wrote it so uh, it's nice like maybe that's a study that we can all do also uh, you know we said okay psalms we can do a lot of research and the songs that exist uh, when we go back like who wrote it how they wrote it when they wrote it you know how did it pick up that also shows us so much about how god has worked how the spirit of god has worked you know on on some of these songs um have you heard of that song when peace like a river attended my my way um anyway so there is this hymn okay uh, peace like a river and apparently somebody wrote it when their loved ones passed away okay and uh, it is well with my soul okay you must have heard it right it is well with my soul but the song came out of uh, actually that person would have been grieving because they they lost their loved ones but they they spoke the word they spoke the assurance of uh, god's hope in their life at a time of great loss and what what did they confess it is well with my soul right and now we are singing that song but it was born out of that place of loss and grief and yet faith and hope in god so it's very beautiful you know, how these songs have been released um how god has spoken and uh, you know i would really encourage us to think and even i raise a hallelujah i think all of us know uh, the way the song was actually written when a little child was battling for his life um and to pray for that child they wrote the song you know uh, so it it's like that it's like that and uh, i was listening to a particular uh, 
uh, Hindi musician, and he was saying uh, one of one of the songs that he wrote. He he was constantly seeking the Lord for songs. He's a songwriter. Constantly seeks this Lord for songs, uh, but he's always open. Like God can speak any time. So when he was trusting the Lord for a song, apparently he got the the music and some of the lyrics of that song when he was uh, on a scooter. So yeah, like he was so excited, and he just knew. See, that is what sensitivity is. The, he knew. This is not me. This is from God. I have to write it down. So then he parked it in some corner, and uh, uh, you know he kind of uh, wrote it down, or he did some voice recording quickly so that he doesn't forget it. And then go back and actually, you know, take it to your uh, studio and start working on it. Okay. So it's like that. It's all about being sensitive to the voice of God. You never know when God might actually put that song into your. spirit not necessarily on stage yeah on stage be open right it can happen but it can also happen in several other settings just be open i think i told you last time one of the uh, uh, like a um Uh, local languages you know songwriter uh, he he said that most of his songs which are super hit in that particular language they he said i didn't even do it for publicity or to become a worship leader nothing it's just my quiet time i worship the lord i speak to the lord i read my bible and then the way i want to express i just wrote those songs and you know when i i started recording those those words as songs and then it kind of picked up okay so it's it's this way to be sensitive to hear from god not that we should throw away the old songs when we say new song new song doesn't mean old songs are bad uh, but you see um relevance sometimes our music changes we are not able to sing in the old fashion way anymore uh, so yeah it's okay we can make place for new songs but we also value the revelation that has come through some of the older songs okay so yeah it's it's beautiful you can take time spend time uh, in in studying music song and how god's message actually comes any thoughts any comments or something you want to share before we go to the next chapter have you heard of uh, uh like those what do you call them? like i hope kansas city and all they have those worship rooms 24 bar 7 it's also like you can also access access it online i think Twenty-four uh, bar seven, uh, and uh, this is how they function. They just have teams for a slot of time, and they only sing prophetic music. So, constantly, they they're singing something new all the time, all the time. Okay, so yeah, it, there there are a lot of people who actually, I mean, ministries that are moving in this. and this is an area where we can grow because it will be a blessing for the people yeah okay okay no questions fine then we shall move on chapter 8 which is about activating the gift of prophecy so this is all the practical aspects okay as far as moving in the gifts is concerned now some basics on the gifts of the holy spirit uh, one is that all believers can manifest all nine gifts of the holy spirit now the common understanding that we have is that uh, every believer may have one or two gifts out of the nine gifts and we are supposed to function in those gifts that's how many believers think that okay god has blessed me with two gifts three gifts and that's it uh, but we see that god wants us to operate in all the gifts all the nine gifts of the holy spirit so when we look at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 it says that earnestly desire the best gifts earnestly desire the best gifts so what does that mean is there an option to pick from all the gifts you can 
desire the best see god will not tell us to do something if uh, it is not uh, it does not have his approval imagine if he says okay you desire the gifts but i won't give you i'll give you what i want to give you it's so funny then why are you telling me to desire if you're not going to give me what i desire isn't it so when god says earnestly desire the best gifts it means we can have the best gifts out of the nine whichever we desire we can have it that's why god says okay go ahead you can desire the best gifts so uh, that in itself is telling us that we can have all the nine gifts so how do we consider the gifts um, i've heard even pastor has used this analogy he generally uses the analogy of a toolbox okay a toolbox so uh, we carry a toolbox of all the nine gifts earnestly desire the best gifts simply means see if a um, electrician comes here to our to our classroom and he uh, realizes there's a problem with the switchboard okay then there will be a certain set of tools that he'll have to use to kind of open it up and fix up the wiring within put it back that would those tools are the best tools for the switchboard now if we say uh, okay can you please work on uh, the tube light or you can you please work on you know something else the fan it has this problem that problem now there's probably a different tool to work on those parts got it he cannot use the same tools that is using on the switchboard in the same way we know that the holy spirit he has all the nine gifts with him all nine gifts are with him now the best gift simply means the right gift for that moment so for example i'm going to pray for a person who is sick which is the best gift for them healing yeah healing is the best gift because that's appropriate for that time so holy spirit has all the gifts and as a believer i have to desire okay god let the gift of healings manifest right now that's how it operates so i'm supposed to desire the best gift for the moment and the spirit of god will manifest that gift understood i'm speaking to a young person who's confused about their lives they don't know what to do what could be one of the best gifts yeah word of knowledge word of wisdom prophecy okay so i'm desiring god i'm going to pray for this young person let prophecy flow let me have a word of wisdom for them in this uh, you know situation of trouble uh, now i am all by myself and um, you know i'm spending time with the lord which is the best gift okay so out of the nine gifts okay gift of faith okay uh no nine gifts of the spirit i'm asking ha huh. gift of tongues right because i am seeking personal edification got it so it's like that the toolbox is all the nine gifts of the holy spirit and um, we we have it at all times but depending on the moments the holy spirit will manifest the right gift and we are supposed to desire that gift okay let this gift manifest got it so that is the way in which it actually works and we also notice that um from uh first corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 paul says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy we are talking about prophecy now uh we in first corinthians chapter 12 you will find the list of the nine gifts then paul will go to first corinthians chapter 13 where he will talk about the best way in which we should manifest the gifts and that is with love okay so that is the context yes flow in the gifts but operate in love and then he continues you know talking about how to operate in the correct way so first corinthians 14 is all about some guidelines how one should operate but in verse 1 there he says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts and especially that you may prophesy now to whom is he saying pursue love 
believers all believers or some believers all believers okay desire spiritual gifts all believers and uh, desire especially that you may prophesy all believers because it's in the same line so how is it that he can say all the believers you desire that you prophesy that means all believers can prophesy yes or no right so when he is writing we are the ones who have put chapter and verse over there but when he wrote the letter it's all continuous so he is writing to all believers all the things that he wrote there he told all believers look there are nine gifts all believers we need love if even if you are operating in the gifts if you don't have love it's meaningless okay but with that he is not saying that oh then hold on only to love no need uh, spiritual gifts if that was the case he'll never write you know in continuation about how to operate in the gifts so our understanding is love is very important gifts are also very important okay so then he starts later on saying okay all the believers you need to have love you need to desire the best gifts and you can prophesy all of you can prophesy and when we continue in that passage we will see he'll tell the believers for everyone uh, you know you prophesy one by one one by one that means in the corinthian church people had so many prophecies that they had to take turns to prophesy one by one got it so it is possible it's not that only a leader or only the fivefold ministry office uh, people are the ones who will prophesy okay so this is a few basics about the gift of prophecy to make us understand that all the believers can prophesy okay uh, now there's another difficult passage this is in um, uh, first corinthians chapter 12 uh, and verse 8 which says for to one is given like that it goes on you know for to one is given this for one is given that and similarly one more difficult passage is first corinthians 12 and verse 11 i'm at the end of page 127 okay so over there uh, another difficult passage where it says but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills now this as he wills has to be seen in the context of we've already said earlier that desire and all all can prophesy especially that you may prophesy so we've established that all can prophesy and then we look at some passages where it says as the holy spirit wills so obviously we understand that yes all can manifest but the holy spirit will will release the gifts which are appropriate for that moment yeah go ahead mm Yeah. Professor. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sensationalism. Yeah. Hmm. 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 there are no such things are happening you know and what are happening is all fake only like they were all uh, yeah come on this things so called prophets who are there and they give their their obvious concept in their vision also and now they are going to all coming up with mm yeah they are giving there is very strong yeah um so the sensationalist uh, the, um theology uh generally comes from this scripture it is in first uh, corinthians chapter 13 that passage about love okay from verse 9 uh, i'll read verse 9 verse 10 it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away okay so basically what it it is saying is when perfection comes 
then the things that are imperfect will go got it uh, and so their understanding is yes all this was there in the early church but when the canon of scripture came remember we discussed about when the bible was kind of uh, decided that okay these will be the 66 books of the bible so according to them the the word is perfect so with that they interpret that perfection has come so when perfection has come the imperfect will be will go and all these things earlier it said right we know in part we prophesy in part uh, and uh, uh, the imperfect will will go away so based on passages like this they say uh, now that the bible is in our hands there is no need for prophecy there is no need for tongues there is no need for any of the gifts to be manifest so it's over it's completely over and uh, there are no uh, you know all these prophets and apostles all those things don't exist so that is the way they go about uh, thing but like if you just on the basis of one passage like this right we need to understand that uh, correctly okay just on the basis of a passage like this we cannot go ahead and and say okay uh, everything that is happening after the scriptures came is imperfect like how do you how can you justify that that's the that's the philosophy or the theology that people hold on to in the word ha huh. yeah see uh, people can present their arguments now when you say when perfection has come that which is imperfect you know will will be gone what is that perfection we have to look for if you read that same passage right let's go further in that same passage hmm yeah if you go if you read like in the context itself look at it uh, when but when that which is perfect has come and then that which is in part will be done away uh, when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish ways for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face it's in context he's saying in face to face like right now we don't see jesus right uh, now i know in part but then i shall know just as i also am known so he is actually talking about the the um, you know like when you see christ face to face okay so that's when the perfection will come all right uh, and we understand that as long as we are here on the earth there's no question of being perfect we are constantly growing in the lord it's only when we see him face to face isn't it uh, so in that context itself we we are able to interpret that the perfection that he is talking about is the perfection of seeing christ face to face okay uh, and i i mean uh, there are other scriptures also that we can use to kind of um say that the interpretation is not about the canon of scripture like now you tell me i can even talk about anything else as the perfection got it when are we going to become perfect okay the canon of scripture is here we are all still you know in that process of sanctification 
we are being sanctified it's still going on so to say that only the gifts oh no no we are only talking about the gifts perfection has come imperfect is only the gifts okay now please justify how you know yeah what about other things why can't we call those things imperfect and even those things have to go so you see we can just get into an argument mode about all these matters but it doesn't make any sense uh, from the context we are understanding the perfection will only come when we see jesus face to face so we've understood that and if there are people who are advocating you know cessationalist theory and all okay fine like no need to argue just let it be uh, and uh, maybe this when they see the manifest see that is another reason why we need the genuine like if we all start flowing the genuine it becomes very difficult for people to deny it isn't it so that's another reason why we can desire and say okay lord we want the genuine and like frankly i understand why people have become like that also because there have been a lot of abuses in the church yeah there are most of things happening now. The miracles, the miracles. Mm. What had happened in, in those times and to this prophet? So they, they are comparing to the old prophets and now mm. present prophets. There are no such things that are happening. So it was they are happening. The, the person should go out regularly. And there are not saying See, then what about Ephesians chapter 4? where Christ gave gifts to the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. And even in that, you know, people say things like, okay, there are no apostles, there are no prophets. Now, why are they still evangelists and teachers? I mean, like, what, how do you, how do you categorize? Then there should be no pastors, no teachers, no evangelists also. See, we can go on arguing, but arguing is not the nice thing to do. So just let it be. Just say, oh, okay, okay, fine. You know, some passages we can also put forth and say, but, you know, there are these scriptures. Uh, and also 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28, it says, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. What about this? So there are many scriptures, there are many, many scriptures we can look at. Uh, there is no categorical scripture that says, okay, the gifts have ceased. Don't believe in the gifts. Nothing like that. There's nothing that says clear cut. It stopped. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I guess you can think about it some more. And in the next class, I can uh, start all the practical aspects, okay, about how to uh, flow in the gift of prophecy in in a very uh, effective way. Hmm. Uh, so it, it's all practical, what follows from here. And hopefully, uh, we will also have a, a session where um, you can all prophesy, yeah, practice. We'll practice the practice session okay so we will do that and i'm quickly coming here to the chat Nina is saying in the variety of psalms um that there are the cry of the heart could be ours too yes nina so that's the beauty of scripture sometimes we find what we are going through in the word and uh, that's amazing right so yes when we read certain psalms we may feel like um, that's exactly that's exactly what i'm sensing right now and uh, it's possible okay sure so if there are no further questions we can pray and close and we'll also have a time of uh, uh, extended time of worship and prayer we encourage the online students if you would like to join please do join us at uh, 12 30 pm on zoom so let's close with the word of prayer and i request someone from class to please pray
Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. God bless.